Well, here we are again, folks. <clears throat> this is Brother Peter with Tidbits from the Word. I'm going to do a little excerpt today. I recommend you get this book. This book is by Wilkerson Bohr, and it's Talk Through the New Testament. And he gives us a way, and a good way, of studying the New Testament. And he gives us some very, very good facts about it. And I'm going to use, I'm going to read his uh, words uh, verbatim, as he says right here. And I'm going to tell you that you need to buy this book. Talk through the New Testament. And, and it, you're going to have, have to find it probably on the website somewhere. And it was uh, designated to his wife's and, and otherwise. And if Thomas Nelson Publishers reserved the rights. And as others say, this is not to be reproduced or anything. I'm not reproducing it. I'm telling you exactly what he said. And this is going to be what he says. And nothing else. I'm not going to add or take away to it, Lord willing. I'm going to tell you what he says right here. And I'm going to recommend that you buy the book. And it's an old book. I don't know if you can even find it anymore. I've had it for several years. Last time it was published was in 1982 that I know of. So you may find it somewhere on the web. But it's worth finding. It's worth having. He said this book was put together by historians. Wow. And we know that. Poets. Prophets. Who wrote the 39 books of the Old Testament were men who passionately anticipated the fulfillment of your ways redemptive program, your ways, that's God, the redemptive program and coming of his anointed one, which is Jesus Christ. Now, <clears throat> when you're talking about in somebody else's book and you're reading and you're reading, I read lots and lots and lots and lots of books. I got books behind me. I read lots of books. In the front of this book, it says that you are not to copy it or repeat it or anything else. Well, it's a funny thing. Now, I've got a Bible over here that was written in 1800 and something. And evidently, a lot of people that write books think nobody has got that Bible because they quote verbatim things that were said by people that wrote on the sidelines of it. They quote verbatim. And I read many books, and it seems like when I'm reading the introduction, I'm reading the same introduction that I read in another book somewhere else. And yet all of those people say not to use or transfer. I just don't think there's any words you can put together that haven't already been put together. So if you want to talk about plagiarism, I guess that everything you say is plagiarism because it can be found somewhere in the world written so much like what you just said. As a matter of fact, at 20 minutes of 4 the other morning, I preached a message on this YouTube right here at 20 minutes of 4 the other morning. I went to church Sunday, and the very preacher I sat under used the same scriptures, used the same words, just about identical, and here it was, he's, he's saying it all over again. Same thing I said in the morning, early at 20 minutes, 4 in the morning, I said it. He's saying it at, at uh, uh, 10.30 in the morning, 11 o'clock, church time. And we didn't, neither one of us talk to each other that day or talk about it. And so it's amazing. But this man says that in the Latin, Cain, K-A-I-N-E, canine, uh, is the Latin uh, for the uh, testimony, literally means New Covenant. Okay, so now we know that when we got the Bible, we got a New Covenant. The New Covenant from God was written, penned down, and he's going to say some things here about it. And this Greek word... Uh, speaks of the last will and testimony that came into effect upon the death of the testator. Now the new covenant was retrofied with the blood of Christ. The person enters into the covenant relationship when he comes to God on his terms. This redemptive covenant is unifying them and binds the book of the New Testament together. See Luke 
uh, 22 and 20. And I'm going to, excuse me for a second, I'm going to pick up a Bible. And I don't never like, never do I ever, I don't care who, who it is. I, I do not like to uh, take their word for what they say. I want to see it my own self. I use a King James Version, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. And he says right here, look at Luke 22 and 20. I'm going to see and I'm going to read it for myself. If a man tells me something in the Bible and tells me a Bible verse, I'm going to read it for myself. I don't know what Bible for 100% this man is using. I'm believing, if I'm studying it, that he's using the King James Version. And I, I'm going to see that that's a fact before I go too far in it when I'm studying. So 22 and 20. And see what he's saying here. In 22 and verse 20. <coughs> Likewise, all the cup after supper saying, This cup is my New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about Jesus Christ, the testator. He was the man that came, took all the sin of the world on him on the cross shed his blood for you and I that we may be able to have eternal life like the Old Testament the New Testament is not one book but an anth anthropology of books that ranged in length from a single sheet of papyrus to a full scroll and I've studied that I've studied the papyrus the paper how they made it how they grew the plant, how they, they hammered it, and how they put it one one way and one the other way, and they hammered again, they powdered it together, and they made a beautiful piece of cloth. And some of them were made long, as much as 30 or 40 feet, and they wrote on those scrolls, and the Hebrews wrote from back to front. They wrote backwards from what we do. The New Testament reflects a wide diversity of themes, personalities, literary forms, achievements, backgrounds, purposes, so that each book has a unique contribution to make. The New Testament less than one-third the length of the Old Testament. It was written from about A.D. 45 to A.D. 95 in K-O-I-N-E, Kone, which is Common Greek the international language of the people. The language was not only widely used, but it was clear, precise, and flexible. The New Testament books were separately circulated and gradually collected together. Their inspiration and apostolic authority guaranteed them a place in the common scriptures, canon of scriptures, excuse me, as they were set apart from other writings in the early church as these books were copied and distributed throughout the Roman Empire. They were eventually placed in the standard order more locally than the chronological. They were in the standard order they're in. When they were written originally they didn't have any verses in them and they were all one parchment. It was like reading a book from end to end without chapters in it or anything. It said of the nine New Testament authors, only Luke was a full Gentile. Paul wrote 13 books. John wrote five. Luke and Peter wrote two. And Matthew, Mark, and James, and Jude, and the author of Hebrews each wrote one. Sometimes these books are arranged into three periods periods or uh, periods the lifetime of Christ 4 BC to 33 BC Matthew Mark Luke and John uh, the expansion of the church in Acts AD uh, Acts and Romans first and second Corinthians Galatians Ephesians Philippians Colossians 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, Philemon, James, 
and the post acts addition uh, of the church AD 62 to 95 first and second Timothy Titus Hebrews first and second Peter first and second third John Jude Revelation a more common classification in the threefold division under historical books the Pauline epistles the non Pauline epistles the revelation this can be mo modified into the following chart and this man has a chart in him it's very good to go by very good to study by I like studying by some things that other people have studied and if you want to see the historical books you look at Matthew Mark Luke and John were spiritual but they also were historical they have the history of Jesus walking on the earth who he was when he came when he called his disciples who he called what he told them they would be fishers of men and not fishers of the sea anymore to those some and some others and to some he even chose a doctor and he chose a lawyer he chose people of high standard in a sense of the word and call them out of the what they were doing into a ministry now first Timothy and second Timothy Titus and Philemon those are three books that we need to learn to live by as Christians. We can read what they have to say and learn in 2 Thessalonians and 1 Thessalonians. The historical books are the five books depict the key events of the life of Christ. The foundation of the church, the early spread of Christianity, the Old Testament anticipations, and the persons of the Old Testament that said that this would come about and it has come about now and these prophets that uh, uh, were incarnate in the form of the God man the word Jesus Christ said in the beginning I was the word I was with God I was made flesh and I dwelt among you I am going back to the Father and I'm going to be the word again and by the way he is the word that you and I read today right here is the word of God is Jesus Christ in our hand it is exactly correct in the King James Version it is correct is what we need we empowered he empowered the apostles uh, apostles and we are empowered by this word and salvation comes through the in, uh, ear of hearing this word and knowing what salvation is and how to get it the Pauline epistles, the epistles that were developed uh, <clears throat> are the seed doctrine of the gospel. Uh, if you, got, you can't have a good plant if you don't have a good seed. If you have a good seed, then you can have a good plant. This Bible is a living vine, a living book. Jesus said, I am the vine, I am the true vine. And in me is life. And that life, if you're in him, you are a branch that will yield fruit. You will be in a good vine. You will yield fruit. You see a branch not yielding fruit? The Bible said that branch gets plucked off and cast into the fire and is no more any good anymore. So that is us. The non-Pauline epistles like Revelation, Peter, John, James, Hebrews, uh, uh, firmly are a multitude. Uh, they show that there were problems creeping into the first church and they deal with those problems saying let's let's end this let's not be puffed up let's not think that one of you guys in the church is better than the other uh, let's let's get it down to facts that uh, the preacher of this church is not to be overly praised or whatever he is a servant of God he is a servant and he's to be treated as such and he's to be reward, rewarded for what he does is work but the hope in Christ and the vindication of that God will come and vindicate the world and take his righteous to heaven with him now we find that <clears throat> in these 27 books of the New Testament uh, and we find it in first and second Thessalonians Colossians Philippians Ephesians Galatians first and second Corinthians Romans, Hebrews, James, 1 Peter, 2 Peter, 1 John, 2 and 3 John, Jude, and Revelations, starting with the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, 
and John. And I just wanted to cover that in this little excerpt. And our time has come and gone. We had a 15-minute allotment, and we're over it. So we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.